Investment tax incentives, just to say what, what they do, they basically allow a firm to deduct a part of their tax liability for a certain proportion of their investment. Those are different for different sectors, but also the cost structure of sectors means that your net effect on taxes may be different depending on these incentives and depending on your production structure. Now we've analyzed this using the SARS data that you probably all heard about. Um, highly confidential and we've applied all the confidentiality requirements. But we've analyzed 300,000 firms from 2006 to 2012. And we then estimate the impact of investment tax incentives on the user cost of capital. So we say, what do these incentives mean for your cost of production? And we see that for pretty much all firms, they lower the cost of production. But then we want to see like, but then does that result in investment? It's not cheaper to invest, but do you invest more? And that is not necessarily always the case. And we will also ask, when you invest, do you create jobs? Because that is the policy objective. And this is what we see from our results. The blue bars are reduction in the user cost of capital. So our investment tax incentives reduce our user cost of capital. We can see this across the board. Now the orange bars are the additional capital demand that derives from that. And in some cases you will see that is zero. Now that is a statistical zero. That is not necessarily a, a real zero, right? But what it means is, statistically, we do not detect an impact of these tax incentives on investment. And that means they are not very effective. That's how we see it. We're not saying no firm will ever respond to this in these sectors. We say, on average, systematically, firms do not respond to tax incentives in finance, transport, electricity, and mining. And therefore, they also don't create jobs. The sectors that do create jobs, like they do respond to these tax incentives, are services, or what we call other services, health, education, and the like, trade, wholesale, retail, hotels, construction, manufacturing, and agriculture. And these are exactly the sectors that also have high multipliers. So creating one job in these sectors will create more jobs through indirect effects. They don't necessarily work in that sector, but they are jobs, and that's what we care about. So you have multiplier effects here. And what that means is that the foregone revenue, so remember, it's a tax incentive. It's revenue don't collect, which you could collect and invest somewhere else, right, as government invested in the rooftop gardens of Johannesburg or whatever poverty reduction measure you want. You don't have that money now. And that is roughly, let's say, 188,000 rand that a job costs on average. Now, the average remuneration for a job, the average wage you get, is 106,000 roughly. Now, you would say that's very expensive. Like, why don't we just give money to, um, to people? Why, why do we have to do these tax incentives? Yeah, precisely because it has multiplier effects, and that really brings down the, the fiscal cost. In addition, what we say is, well, but if you then also only focus on the sectors that actually respond to our incentives and don't give incentives to sectors that don't hire more, then you also have additional savings. So in the end, it's not that expensive to give these tax incentives well targeted to the com companies that respond. For the manufacturing sector, one example is a cost, uh, a, a job in manufacturing will cost you 72,000 rand with these tax incentives. But due to the multipliers that we see here, it goes down to 15,000. So we're saying incentives are good, they work, but we can make sure that they are more efficient. 